So when I finish the book that I'm working on now, I am going to write a book about my mother's death and her life and the process of taking care of her as she died. And I know a lot of people who have done this by themselves for an elderly parent. And I, I also know elderly parents who are um, alone. And I have a good friend who is taking care of her mother as her mother uh, slowly loses her memory and loses much of her capacity to function. Her mother can still walk around, she can still have a conversation, but they might have the same conversation again in five minutes. And I sent a note to that friend of mine last night, as I've sent notes before, just saying, you are doing such a wonderful thing. And how, if it weren't for her taking care of her mother, her mother would have to be in some sort of home, in a, in a nursing home. And that may be a nice nursing home or it may not. But the point is that she is getting, because of the daughter's efforts, she is getting to uh, live out the last of her life in a beautiful place, able to look out the windows at this beautiful canyon and beautiful vegetation, and animals, and also to live with her beloved daughter who loves her very much. And that's a gift. And I, I know I committed to living around my mom for the rest of her life when I was, oh, probably 25. And at first I lived, you know, 20 miles away. And then I lived two miles away. And then we lived on the same property for the last 20 years, which I have to say was some of the happiest years of my life and hers too. And it was an interesting thing that through my 20s and early 30s, when I would tell um, American friends that I was, had committed to living around my mom and was taking care of her, and she was helping me too, obviously. I, I would not have my writing career if, if she wouldn't have helped me so much. And it helped everybody, and, except for those who hate my writing. And, um, when I would tell American friends this, they would say, gosh, you must have some separation issues and this is really unhealthy. And <clears throat> when, I <would> tell <clears throat> when I would tell friends from non-industrialized nations or when I would tell indigenous friends, they would say, well, of course, somebody's going to live with the parent and somebody's gonna stay there. And I remember one conversation I had in my 30s with that really was very important to me when, you know, I'd been influenced by my American friends and I, I said to, to a Maori couple, so I have good boundaries with my mom that, you know, I take care of a lot of things, but I don't really like going to the grocery store. So I don't do that. She goes to the grocery store on her own. And the two Maori people looked at me like I was dog poop you would clean off your shoes and said, you don't take your elderly mother to the grocery store? What is wrong with you? And lesson learned, and from then on, if my mom wanted me to take her to the grocery store, I did. So I think we have an epidemic, or as a friend of mine says, a pandemic of shattered generational care. We, we evolved, for the most part, living with our families for our entire lives or living near our families. Of course, there'd be exogenous marriage. So some people would leave, 
But for the most part, when you get old, your family's there. They're not 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 miles away, or one of them being 17 miles away, one of them being 120 miles away, and one of them being 2,000 miles away. That did happen some, of course, but it wasn't so much. And I think it is one of the many I'm not suggesting, by the way, that people have to live with their parents. You know, I lived close to my mom. I never, until, until the last eight months when she was dying of cancer, I didn't live with her, um, except when there were some health situations where, you know, one or the other would be helping out for a little while. But, but for the most part, you know, just living nearby and hanging out. And that's... I saw a video last night, just looking at stupid YouTube videos. Uh, there was one of a wild horse, two wild horses had been caught and they were part of the same family pack, their family herd. And one of them was adopted by this woman, but she'd seen a video of him with one of the other horses from his herd. And she spent years pouring through the adoptions and a couple years until she found the, she saw the horse that had been in his family. And so she adopted that horse too. And the whole video was one of those tear jerkers of the moment when the, they got back together. And those family bonds, and it doesn't matter whether we're talking about humans or horses, those family bonds are strong. and. I think, I think we are, we and the culture are doing both the younger and older generations great disservices by breaking, by shattering this intergenerational caretaking and bond.